Hey, it's Magnus here, and it has been a long time. A very, very long time. This video is going to be a kind of, just a little update, mainly on this machine here. This is our old milling machine. Um, I say old, um, still a couple of years old, but uh, still a couple of years new. But we, we started using it last year. Um, I basically kind of kicking and screaming, learn CNC and we made a bunch of products with it. We um, we made the titanium wallet, which is this wallet here. We started making these little candy cans, titanium cans uh, for holding stuff. They got lids. Um, uh, we made knives, things like that. Like it's done a lot of work, and basically it's a, it was a complete bottleneck. We were doing a 24 shift, 24 hour shift for a while there. Um, a lot has happened. That's why I'm talking fast. Uh, I don't want this to be a, like a long rambling 20 minute video. I'm gonna try and keep it down to five minutes. But basically, um, what happened is we started really struggling in business like quite a while ago, and especially in the last sort of year, especially the last six months, um, made, sort of, made all sorts of mistakes. Um, things gone wrong, not planning things, not thinking, a uh, bit of unluckiness as well, um, that sort of stuff. And we basically, uh, we basically have been struggling, and so, but we've been really maxing out this machine to sort of create as much value as we can, sort of in house. Um, you know, our monthly costs have gone up. This is sort of behind the scenes business stuff you don't need to know, but I'm going to share anyway, um, because it kind of explains this machine here. We basically looked through our numbers, um, sort of myself. Um, Nathan, Sky, had my machinist look look at it. He's very good in business, and we all so sort of look through things, look through the finances and the monthly ingo incomings and outgoings, and what we figured out was that I can either the end result. Everyone looked at it independently and went, uh, we can either go out of business or buy a new milling machine, like an additional milling machine in, in addition to this one, or at least one that can can do things better, faster, quicker. Um, and it was just like, well, I don't really want to go out of business. So, we, you know, we were lucky to get the financing. We, you know, we tried to get, uh, we, we applied for financing and we were offered it, which was amazing. We decided, we were like, right, we have to get a machine. What do we get? We were looking at all sorts of different machines. Uh, we kind of wrote off any sort of the high-end Japanese machines because they were just too expensive. Um, and a very long lead time as well, but too expensive is the main thing. We started looking at um, Korean machines like Hyundai and Doosan. We uh, very briefly looked at Haas machines. Don't really want to go for a Haas. Um, kind of re reluctant to go for a Korean one as well, um, because we try to buy the best we can. Anyway, long story short, my machinist who does our products have been doing a lot of our products for a while. Um, we've not been able to give him as much work as we have in the past and um, Long story short, we bought his Japanese-made Kitamura horizontal four-axis pallet changing machine. Um, it's it's a beast. Like it is more than we ever could have imagined in terms of getting a machine. It is just so much better than that. It's not even funny. Just just everything. So so this is a used machine, but it's essentially brand new because. My machinist really looks after his stuff and so it worked for him and it worked for us you know he you know we tumble parts for him you know in those tumblers over there we do parts for him he makes his own titanium uh, products as well cheese grater slicers things like that and you know and he wants us to stay in business you know and uh you know and so basically we sort of worked out that us buying this machine you know we needed a machine we may as well buy this one um it's it's uh it's it's so applicable for what we do it's unbelievable like this machine here is a vertical so you put parts down on here um it comes down mills it um you know you, you drill you take the parts off you put more parts on the machine's got to be stopped while you do that you lose a bit of efficiency there this machine for by its incredible sort of unparalleled build unparalleled build quality because it's japanese um uh, the precision, the, the, the everything. I hope I'm getting across to you how unbelievably good this machine is. So what it's got is, if we open this, um, oh, look at that one finger opening. This will blow your mind. This door, I'll see if we can get this on camera. Let's have a look. Do 
see that carbon fiber pattern? It is carbon fiber. The whole door is carbon fiber because on, on machines quite quite often it gets heavy heavy going for workers um, opening and closing the, the door of a machine. So this is actually a whole full-on carbon fiber door. Um, I told you it was a good quality machine. Anyway, so this is one of the pallets. There's two pallets. So this is this is the first one here. Sorry, not pallet, tombstone. On a on a on a machine like that you'd call it a pallet, I think. On this one, it does have a pallet down here. But then you've got a, what's called a tombstone, which if I show you here, you can actually turn, these can turn, this can turn in the machine. You can mill parts on this side, you can mill parts here, obviously here, and on the fourth side. Or you could have one that's like a hexagon, and you can mill parts on each side. So uh, I'm, only, I'm only using like the three axis just now, so three axis equivalent. So I'll mill this side, and if I go around here, this will flip round like a like a like a revolving door. That will go round and come into this side here. So that's an identical one in there. You can just see that. Um, so so what happens here is, is the machine, as you can see, instead of the spindle coming down, it, it's 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 horizontal instead of vertical. Um, still the same three axes. So while it's milling in there. I can be changing this side, so it's carrying on working. So, for instance, this this is making the candy cans, the the candy can that I showed you earlier. That's being made on on here. So this is oper operation one, operation two, operation three, operation four. Um, so I'll be screwing things on and off. It takes me seven minutes to take them off and put them, you know, put the other put the fresh ones on, set it up for the next operation. But the operation in there, those four operations, take 26 minutes to machine. So, if we were doing that on this machine, well, it wouldn't take 26 minutes, it would take longer than that. It would, it take, this is a slower machine. Um, slower and less accurate and just not as good, really. Still a good machine, we'll still make products on it. This machine has to stop, you have to take all the parts off, and then you know put fresh parts on and run it again. But this machine here, you, you don't lose that. The, 20, the 26 minutes that it's taken to machine this side, on here, you're doing it simultaneously. So you're, you're sort of working on there. Um, what I'll do is I'll do a quick pallet change and show you how that works. Um, so this is the controller there. A little bit more complex and involved, but that's still pretty easy compared to the other machine. It's a bit of a learning curve, but it's been okay. You know, I've been cranking out, um, you know, about 30, 40, 50 candy cans every day over the last week or so. It's been, it's been going really, really well. Um, so what we can do is, uh, That is the machine code M60, which um, maybe in general, but certainly on this machine means change the pallet. And I will push cycle start. The machine does nothing because the door's open. So I close the door like so. Push the button that says movable. I think that's like a Japanese random translation, I'm assuming it should say pallet change or something, just is movable. Um, push that, we have got to hear some sounds. And that's it. I, the machine will start machining, I'll start taking these parts off, and that's basically what I've been doing all day every day for the last week. Um, gets a little bit monotonous, but that that is the nature of the beast. So, quite a compact machine. Really not too, uh, not too big. Um, the Japanese will make machines that, um, that are very compact. They're generally quite well known for that. And certainly this one in particular. Um, so this machine here is, uh, unlike that machine, those, that's the most common type of machine. A flatbed, three axis vertical. This one, and so you can put random stuff on it. You can put like engine blocks and all that sort of stuff. This is, this is, almost as big as you can fit in here. That's what you see there is you can't get any bigger. So very difficult to sort of chuck an engine block on there and do sort of jobbing work where you're doing different things and switching and changing. This is a small part high production machine and that's what we do. Small parts high production. Really that's that's all there is to it. Um, it's got a chip conveyor so uh, on that machine there the chips all the swarf just kind of goes everywhere. You have to vacuum it up. Um, this one here uh, go around the back here. 
It's actually a little bit of a design flaw. Kind of, kind of. Uh, so it's a bit noisy here. That's the spindle. Um, so that there is, that's, that's all the chips. That, that is the titanium chips floating on top of the coolant. Um, if you've got any thoughts, if you, you're a machinist or you've got experience with that, how to stop that happening. They all seem to just float on top. Um, uh, I'd love to hear if you have a solution to that. Um, so anyway, there's a conveyor there, and the conveyor will take the chips up from there. Um, this is a terrible explanation, but... Uh, they, and they come up, the chips will come up here, and they'll get dumped into that bucket there. Um, oh, the tool changer. So this is, that's the other thing. That old one, we had to manually put the tools changer. We want a new end mill, we had to you know, keep putting new tools in. One, one in, one out, one in, one out. This one's got an automatic tool changer. So if I open this, you can see the tools in here. Yes, um, this is the machine that is hopefully gonna sort of get, it out, get us out of this tough financial situation we've kind of been in. You know, like cash flow has been tough. You know, like we've been, Sky, Nathan and myself, we've been pushing really hard to, to, to get on top of, you know, we've got sort of orders that are um, behind schedule for shipping or ship, shipments that are behind schedule. There's, you know, we're, we're trying to get money to come in to meet our, meet our sort of monthly expenses and stuff like that, or, you know, and, and sort of just free up, sort of help our cash flow be a bit better. Um, because we've sort of been treading water, going a little bit behind, getting a little bit ahead for a while now. And hopefully this is the machine that really sort of um, really helps us there. Um, I'll probably do some videos of the machine running and show you some details and the, you know, maybe spindle running at some point. Uh, but for now, uh, hopefully that is of interest to you. And any questions or comments, obviously comment below and I'll uh, see if I can answer them for you. Thank you for watching.